Hi there, my name is Mr. Coach, and in this video we're going to talk about mathematical induction. And before going into the details, let me first give you an overview of what I'm going to talk about. So first of all, I will give you a quick introduction to mathematical induction, explaining what it is and visualizing it. Then I'm going to explain how to create a proof using induction by a step-by-step -step guide. And we will directly apply this step-by-step -step guide to two exercises that I've prepared for this video. One involving a summation and the other involving both a summation and a factorial. Then I will add links to more induction videos that I've created. One of them is about the details of the mathematical background of mathematical induction. And this one also contains two exercises. So if you'd like to practice a bit more, I'd like to advise you to have a look at that video too. And another video that I've created contains six exercises on mathematical induction. So especially this video as well is very nice for you to practice with mathematical induction. But let's just start with a quick introduction to mathematical induction. So mathematical induction is a mathematical proof technique. It is used for proving that all elements of a set satisfy the same property. And this property can literally be anything. The only restriction is on the set because the set has to satisfy the well-ordering property. And an example of such a set is n, the set of natural numbers. And this well-ordering property is something that I will explain in the video on the details of the mathematical background of mathematical induction. So have a look at that video if you want to know more about this property. But for now, it's just important to know that the set of natural numbers satisfies this property. And therefore, as a result, Mathematical induction is most commonly used to prove that all natural numbers satisfy a certain property. And mathematical induction is often compared with falling dominoes. And let me explain this to you. Imagine that you have a sequence of dominoes and you push the first one. Then, of course, it will fall to the right. And it will not just cause the first domino to fall to the right, but the second one will fall to the right as well because the first one pushes it. Then the third one will fall to the right as well because the second one pushes it. The same holds for the fourth one and the fifth one. And if you have infinitely many dominoes, this will go on to infinity. And this falling to the right can be a property which we just talked about. And within induction, pushing the first domino is called the basis for induction. Or you could compare it to that. And if you choose an arbitrary domino in this sequence of infinitely many dominoes and you just assume that it will fall to the right because it has been pushed by the previous one, then it will cause the domino right to the arbitrary domino to fall as well. If you can prove that, then you have your induction step. And assuming that the domino that you've chosen will fall to the right is called the induction hypothesis. So that's how you could look at induction based on a comparison with falling dominoes. So let me now explain to you how to create a proof using induction. And I do this by the step-by-step -step guide that is in front of you. And this could be for the moment quite some information, but I assure you this is going to be easy and we will apply the step-by-step -step guide with two more exercises. So I'm sure you will get what is written here and it will just help you to create proofs using induction. So the zero step is that the statement will be of the form for all n in the natural numbers, pn is true, where you can see pn as some kind of function which gets as input an element or an object and which returns either true if the element satisfies the property or returns false if it doesn't. Then the actual proof begins and the proof is divided into two steps or into two parts. The first one is the basis for induction and the second one is the induction step. Within the basis for induction, we show that the first element of the sequence satisfies property P. You can compare this with the sequence of falling dominoes in which you push the first one, which will cause it to fall to the right. So here we just get the first element and show that the property for this first element holds. Then we move on to the induction step, starting with the induction hypothesis, in which we assume that for each n in the natural numbers, Pn is true. What we then have to prove is that for each n in the natural numbers, pn plus 1 is true. So we assume that, that each n contains some property p, 
but we now need to prove that the next element, next to n, satisfies this property as well. In order to do that, we cannot just reason about n, because we're talking about for each n. Therefore, we have to choose an arbitrary n, and this has to do with the following. Because, consider this drawing. If this is the set, which is in our case the set of natural numbers, and the orange dots represent all n, then it's more useful to choose an arbitrary n, let's call it k. And if we reason about this arbitrary k based on the fact that it's an arbitrary n, so all the other elements will have the same characteristics as k, we can conclude that if something holds for k, then it must hold for all n, since it was randomly chosen. So what we will do in step 5 is prove that pk plus 1 is true. And if we can do that, we can reason back to all n and conclude that pn plus 1 must be true. And showing that pk plus 1 is true is something which we do in step 6. And we do this using the induction hypothesis. You can see the induction hypothesis as some kind of a tool to help you prove that pk plus 1 is true. Then moving on to the seventh step, here we conclude that because we've shown that pk plus 1 is true, and as the implication pk implies that pk plus 1 holds for an arbitrary k, thus we can conclude that the implication pn implies pn plus 1 must hold for all n, based on the reasoning that I've just explained. Then we're ready for the conclusion of the proof, which is step 8. And in step 8 we say, thus, based on the principle of mathematical induction, the statement holds. And the principle of mathematical induction is a theorem. So this whole proof is based on a theorem. Therefore, we have to refer to it within our proof when concluding that the statement holds. And by the way, I will prove this theorem in the video containing more details about the mathematical background of induction. So if you'd like to see that, make sure to check out that video. But this is the step-by-step -step guide. So now let's just apply it to the exercises that I've prepared and during answering the first exercise, I will refer back to the steps in the step-by-step -step guide. So the first exercise is the following one. It contains a summation and it says, prove that for all n in the natural numbers, the summation of i is 1 to n over 2 to the power i equals 2 to the power n plus 1 minus 2. If you'd like to do this exercise on your own first, you're free to do so. I think it would be really brave. So just press pause if you'd like to do that and press play again if you'd like to see the answer because that's what I'm going to continue with now. So the proof to the exercise is the following one. The numbers in front of the sentences refer back to the steps in the step-by-step -step guide. So here's our proof using mathematical induction. We first start with the basis for induction, where we take the first element to be 1, so n equals 1. Then we will work from the left-hand side of the expression to the right-hand side, since we want to prove this property. So we substitute n in the expression by 1, since in the basis n equals 1. So the summation of i is 1 to 1 over 2 to the power i equals just 2, because it's a summation over one element, where i is 1, so we have 2. This is equal to 4 minus 2, and we can rewrite 4 as 2 to the power 2, which is equivalent to 2 to the power 1 plus 1. So our result is 2 to the power 1 plus 1 minus 2 which is exactly on the right hand side if we substitute n by 1. So the basis holds. Now moving on to the induction step. We first start with our induction hypothesis. So assume that for each n in the natural numbers, the summation of i is 1 to n over 2 to the power i equals 2 to the power n plus 1 minus 2. This is just our expression over here. Now we're going to choose an arbitrary n in n, and we call it k. We will reason about this k, and then come back to the for all n expression, based on the explanation that I've given in the step-by-step -step guide. So we're at step 4 at this very moment, and we're going to prove that pk plus 1 is true. Therefore, we have to prove that the summation of i is 1 to k plus 1 over 2 to the power i equals 2 to the power k plus 1 plus 1 minus 2. In order to prove this, we're going to start on the left-hand side, and we're going to deduce that that is on the right-hand side. So the first thing we do with the left-hand side is split the summation up, and we do this in order to use our induction hypothesis, because this is a sum that goes from i is 1 to k, 
if we substitute n by the arbitrary k. We then get a k plus 1 term and the summation of i is 1 to k. So the k plus 1 term is 2 to the power of k plus 1 because we've just filled it in in what we sum over. Then the rest is this sum from i is 1 to k over 2 to the power of i. Now we can apply our induction hypothesis because that's exactly what's on the left hand side. So we substitute what is on the right hand side and we get this expression. We still have the k plus 1 term but now we have also 2 to the power of k plus 1 minus 2 over here. We can rewrite this because it says 2 times 2 to the power of k plus 1. So we actually have 2 times 2 to the power of k plus 1 and therefore we can add the 2 in their exponents. So what we will have is 2 to the power of k plus 1 plus 1 which represents the 2 that was here over here. So our result is 2 to the power of k plus 1 plus 1 minus 2 which is exactly the right hand side. So we've proved this expression as well. Now, as this holds for an arbitrary k, this must hold for all n in the natural numbers. And concluding our proof, since both the basis and the induction step hold, based on the principle of mathematical induction, this statement holds. So, as you've probably noticed, our step-by-step -step guide requires quite some steps. It requires eight steps, but it gives you a nice overview of where you are in the proof, and it makes you understand what you're actually doing during the proof. Let's now move on to the second exercise, which is a bit harder, but the only thing that is new is the factorial sign. So this is the second exercise. We're going to prove that for all n in the natural numbers, the summation of i is 1 to n over i times i factorial equals n plus 1 factorial minus 1. So again, if you'd like to do the exercise on your own first, I think it would be a nice opportunity. So press pause if you'd like to do so. Press play again if you're ready. But for now, I'm just going to move on to the proof of the exercise. By the way, remember that a factorial of a number, for example, 3, is defined as 3 factorial equals 3 times 2 times 1. Or for a in general, for example, it's 8 times a minus 1 times a minus 2, etc. Till 1. So the proof to this exercise is this. So our proof using mathematical induction, again, has a basis and an induction step. In the basis, we again choose n as 1, because that's what our sequence of natural numbers starts with. Thus, we substitute in the expression all n's by 1. We want to start at the left-hand side, and we will deduce the right-hand side. So we have the summation of i as 1 to 1 over i times i factorial. This is equal to just a summation over one term, where i is 1, which is 1 times 1 factorial, which just equals 1. This equals 2 minus 1, which equals 2 factorial minus 1, because 2 factorial is just 2, it's 2 times 1. And this equals 1 plus 1 factorial minus 1, which is exactly on the right hand side. So the basis holds as well. Now moving on to the induction step, we're going to start with our induction hypothesis again. Assume that for each n in the natural numbers, this holds, which is exactly the expression, which is over here. We're now going to prove that this also holds for n plus 1. So we have the summation from i is 1 to n plus 1 over i times i factorial. This should equal n plus 1 plus 1 factorial minus 1. Now we're again going to choose an arbitrary n. We call it k. And by the way, you don't have to give the element a new name as long as it is an arbitrary one. Now what has to be proved is the exact same expression, but now using k instead of n. We're going to start with the left hand side and we're going to deduce the right hand side. So we have our summation from i is 1 to k plus 1 over i times i factorial. The first thing we're going to do is split up the sum from i is 1 to k instead of to k plus 1. So our k plus 1 term drops out and is over here. It's k plus 1 times k plus 1 factorial. Now we can again use our induction hypothesis. So we have split up the terms in order to use our induction hypothesis, which is over here. So now we can substitute it by k plus 1 factorial minus 1, which is then over here, with our k plus 1 term over here still. Well, this is something we can rewrite, because we have a k plus 1 factorial over here, and here as well, times k plus 1. So this is actually equal to k plus 2 times k plus 1 factorial because we just add another k plus 1 factorial term. And this is again something we can rewrite because k plus 1 factorial times k plus 2 is actually just k plus 2 factorial. 
and thus we have k plus 1 plus 1 factorial minus 1 which is exactly on the right hand side what we had to prove so again we've shown what we needed to prove and as this holds for an arbitrary k this must hold for all n in the natural numbers and since both the basis and the induction step hold based on the principle of mathematical induction the statement holds so q e d which we again indicate by this little square at the end of the proof so at the end of this video i'd like to refer to other videos that i've created on induction so the one on the left contains more details on the mathematical background of mathematical induction if you're interested in that have a look at that video it also contains two more exercises where i apply the exact same step-by-step -step guide and the other video contains six more exercises on induction which involve for example instead of a summation of a sequence a product of a sequence it also involves odd and even numbers divisibility recursive definitions like fibonacci sequence for example and i think it would be a nice opportunity for you to have a look at these exercises as well but this is the end of the video. I've explained what mathematical induction is. I've provided you by a step-by-step -step guide and we have applied the step-by-step -step guide to two exercises. And therefore we've solved these exercises together. So that's it. If you thought this video was useful, make sure to hit the thumbs up to give this video a like. If you still have any questions, make sure to use the comment section. And if you'd like to see more of Mr. Code, make sure to subscribe. So stay cool. Bye.